Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Anal Cancer Introduction Anal cancer happens when cancerous cells form in the tissues of the anus. Anal cancer is much less common than cancer of the colon or rectum. It is a fairly rare cancer, but it is becoming more common. Most patients with anal cancer can be cured. This is because anal cancer is often diagnosed early. However, anal cancer can be life-threatening. This program explains anal cancer. It talks about the symptoms and causes of anal cancer and what treatment options are available. The anus. The anus is part of the digestive tract. The digestive tract is made up of organs through which food and beverages pass. The anus is at the end of the large intestine below the rectum. The anus is the opening of the rectum to the outside of the body. Stool or solid waste leaves the body through the anus. Two ring-like muscles open and close the anal opening to let stool pass through the body. These muscles are called sphincter muscles. The anal canal is a part of the anus. It is between the rectum and the anal opening. The anal canal is about one and a half inches or 3.8 centimeters long. The anus is formed partly from the outer skin layers of the body and partly from the intestine. The skin around the outside of the anus is called the perianal area. Anal cancer. The body is made up of very small cells. Normal cells in the body grow and die in a controlled way. Sometimes cells keep dividing and growing in an uncontrolled way, causing an abnormal growth called a tumor. If the tumor does not invade nearby tissues and body parts, it is called a benign tumor or non-cancerous growth. Benign tumors are usually not life-threatening. If the tumor invades nearby tissues and body parts, it is called a malignant tumor or cancer. Cancerous cells spread to different parts of the body through blood vessels and lymph channels. Lymph is a clear fluid produced by the body that drains waste from cells. It travels through special vessels and structures called lymph nodes. Cancers in the body are given names depending on where the cancer started. Cancer that begins in the anus will always be called anal cancer, even if it spreads to other places. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Risk factors It is usually impossible to know what caused cancer in an individual patient, but healthcare providers know factors that can increase the chances of getting cancer. These are known as risk factors. Being infected with human papillomavirus, or HPV, is the most important risk factor for anal cancer. Most cases of anal cancer are linked to HPV. HPV is a virus that can cause abnormal tissue growth and other changes to cells. HPV is passed during skin-to-skin -skin contact with an infected area. Smokers are more likely than non-smokers to develop anal cancer. Quitting smoking can reduce your risk. Being over 50 years old also increases your risk for developing anal cancer. The risk for developing anal cancer is also increased if you have anal fistulas or other abnormal openings in the anal tissue. Having anal sex can increase a person's risk for anal cancer. Having multiple sex partners also raises the risk of anal cancer. Not everyone who has risk factors for anal cancer develops anal cancer. Some people who have no risk factors for anal cancer can still develop the cancer. Symptoms. Common symptoms of anal cancer include a change in bowel habits, a lump near the anus, bleeding from the anus or rectum, itching or discharge from the anus, pain or pressure in the area around the anus,
These symptoms may not be caused by anal cancer. Symptoms of anal cancer are similar to the symptoms of more common conditions like hemorrhoids. See a healthcare provider to find out what is causing your symptoms. Early treatment for anal cancer is important. Diagnosis Your healthcare provider will ask you about your symptoms and medical history. A physical exam will be performed. A digital rectal examination, or DRE, may be done as part of a physical exam to check the anus and rectum. The healthcare provider inserts a lubricated and gloved finger into the lower part of the rectum to feel for signs of a problem. An anoscopy uses a short, lighted tube to examine the anus and lower rectum. A proctoscopy also uses a short, lighted tube to examine the rectum, anus, or colon. A biopsy may be done during an anoscopy. A biopsy is the removal of cells or tissues. These cells are examined for cancerous cells under a microscope. An ultrasound may also be helpful in diagnosing anal cancer. An ultrasound probe is inserted into the anus or rectum. The probe uses sound waves and their echoes to form a picture of the body tissues. Staging if you have anal cancer, your healthcare provider will determine the stage of the cancer. Staging is an attempt to find out if the cancer has spread. Stages are usually described using the numbers 1 to 4. A lower number indicates an earlier stage. Staging is helpful in deciding the best course of treatment. When staging anal cancer, healthcare providers want to find out the size of the tumor, where the tumor is in the anus, whether the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes. If anal cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes, it can spread to other areas of the body. There are some tests that healthcare providers can use to help determine if and where the cancer is spread. Tumors can show up on a CT scan. A chest X-ray may be helpful in showing if anal cancer has spread. An ultrasound may also be helpful in staging anal cancer. Sometimes staging is not complete until after surgery to remove the tumor in nearby lymph nodes. Treatment and supportive care The type of treatment used for anal cancer depends on the size and location of the tumor, the stage of the disease, and the health of the patient. Treatment for anal cancer may involve radiation therapy, chemotherapy, surgery, or some combination of these treatments. Radiation therapy uses high-energy rays to kill cancer cells and stop them from growing and spreading. External radiation comes from a machine that aims the rays at a specific area of the body. Internal radiation uses radioactive liquids to treat specific areas. This is done by sealing the radioactive substance in needles, seeds, wires, or catheters. Chemotherapy is the use of drugs to kill cancer cells. Chemotherapy is taken by mouth or injected into a vein or muscle. The drugs enter the bloodstream and can reach cancer cells throughout the body. Chemotherapy and radiation therapy may sometimes be done together. These treatments may be used on their own. They can be done before surgery or after surgery. There are two kinds of surgery used to treat anal cancer, a local resection and an abdominoperineal resection. A local resection removes tumors and tissue in the lower part of the anus. This may save the sphincter muscles so the patient can still control bowel movements. An abdominoperineal resection removes the anus, the rectum, and part of the colon through an incision in the abdomen. The rest of the colon is then rerouted to the outside in a procedure called a colostomy. The opening in the abdomen is known as a stoma. Waste will be collected in a disposable bag outside the body. Immunotherapy may be recommended with patients with advanced anal cancer. Immunotherapy uses the body's immune system to fight cancer. There may be clinical trials available for people with anal cancer. Clinical trials test new medical approaches and treatments. Anal cancer and its treatment can lead to other health problems. It is important to have supportive care before, during and after cancer treatment. Supportive care is treatment to control symptoms, to relieve the side effects of therapy, and to help you cope with emotions.
Supportive care also deals with the pain associated with cancer and its treatments. Your health care provider or a pain control specialist can suggest ways to relieve or reduce pain. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Anal cancer happens when cancerous cells form in the tissues of the anus. Anal cancer is much less common than cancer of the colon or rectum. It is a fairly rare cancer, but it is becoming more common. Being infected with human papillomavirus, or HPV, is the most important risk factor for anal cancer. Most cases of anal cancer are linked to HPV. HPV is a virus that can cause abnormal tissue growth and other changes to cells. Smokers are more likely than non-smokers to develop anal cancer. Quitting smoking can reduce your risk. Common symptoms of anal cancer include a change in bowel habits, a lump near the anus, bleeding from the anus or rectum, itching or discharge from the anus, pain or pressure in the area around the anus. A digital rectal examination, or DRE, may be done as part of a physical exam to check the anus and rectum. The healthcare provider inserts a lubricated and gloved finger into the lower part of the rectum to feel for signs of a problem. If you have anal cancer, your healthcare provider will determine the stage of the cancer. Staging is an attempt to find out if the cancer has spread. Stages are usually described using the numbers 1 to 4. A lower number indicates an earlier stage. Staging is helpful in deciding the best course of treatment. Treatment for anal cancer may involve radiation therapy, chemotherapy, surgery, or some combination of these treatments. Anal cancer and its treatment can lead to other health problems. It is important to have supportive care before, during, and after cancer treatment. Supportive care is treatment to control symptoms, to relieve the side effects of therapy, and to help you cope with emotions. Thank you for using Explain.